you must have already studied spherical reflecting surfaces like concave mirror and convex mirror earlier this is about refraction and that means the glasses or any other uh, substance in bulk having a spherical surface right or a curved surface so that curve can be taken as part of a big sphere so that will also come into the same topic that is spherical refracting surfaces okay so it is part of a sphere of ref of a refracting material obviously for example glass water or any other uh, material which can allow the light to pass through it maybe the speed will change so that is a different thing now a refracting surface can be again uh, uh, of two types for example you may have a surface like this okay so this is the bulk of that material now this will be the surface right and it can also be of other shape this shape right so again the bulk of the medium is here and uh, now here this is the surface the refracting surface that means light will be incident on this okay and in most of the cases let's say this is your rarer medium and this one will be denser rarer and denser okay now the refracting surface which is convex towards the rarer rarer medium so this is this surface is convex surface so if it is convex towards the rarer medium it is called convex refracting surface right so this surface is convex refracting surface is just a convention right because uh, it's not that light cannot travel in opposite direction light can travel in this direction as well but we will choose we actually choose one convention that light is traveling in the from the rarer to the denser and when light travels from rarer to denser medium what does it see it see that or the the surface which it is incident on that surface is a convex surface that's why this is convex refracting surface and for the same reason this will be called concave refracting surface right it doesn't mean that light cannot be incident from this side it is possible it is possible but we have chosen only one reference okay now in this in both these cases we know what is rarer medium what is denser medium here and now in both the cases if you draw or if you uh, see somewhere uh, as i said this spherical refracting surface will be part of a big sphere so let's say this is that big sphere right so that sphere will have a center and a radius right so its center may be somewhere over here this is called center of curvature and from center if you draw a line a radius right like this then this is called the pole we yeah. represent it by p and a line which extends along the same direction that is called the principal axis so let's say if this is a p c and it continues in this direction let's say that is b so this a p c b is nothing but principal axis so that is the principal axis c is center of curvature and uh, this distance cp is radius of curvature 
what is left p p is nothing but pole right and it will be same for the second case that is concave surface as well same thing so now here how will you know what is the center of curvature and radius curvature so if you see here in this case center of curvature actually the sphere right this is the sphere of which this refracting surface is the part so center of curvature will be here so that is the difference and this is the radius of curvature this is pole and again it can be a b then apcb or acpb is the principal axis everything is same so this is uh, basically the your you should be familiar with the spherical refracting surface and two different spherical surfaces so, okay now there are some assumptions those assumptions are important which we will have to consider throughout this chapter so object is the point object and uh, it lies on the principal axis before doing the derivations these are the assumptions which we should know the object is a point object and it lies on principal axis okay second point or second assumption the incident and the refracted rays make small angles with the principal axis that means angle of incidence and angle of refraction are very small right okay next point aperture right aperture is also very on the pole. small so what is aperture aperture is if you see this curved surface right uh, this curved surface will also i mean if you see this part it it can be taken as a circle and diameter of this circle that is the aperture that means this is this length is the aperture so if a curved surface is like this then this length is aperture the diameter of yes, the sir. curved surface is nothing but aperture so these were few assumptions and then let's also see some uh, sign conventions again very important because we have to follow these sign conventions otherwise it will give us problem while derivation as well as while solving numericals so we have to be very careful of the uh, yes. pole positive pole what so negative side of the pole and positive side of the pole right like the, i mean the lens we take uh, it as how in the coordinate axis not exactly that uh, yeah that's that's what i'm saying that the sign convention has to be very clear otherwise there are chances of making mistakes so the first thing is that the incident ray in all the diagrams which you are going to make incident ray will be always like this that is from left to right so first thing is that right whatever formula we are going to derive whatever uh, expression and problem solving we'll be doing in all the cases we will try our level best to make sure that incident rays are always from left to right direction right yes. second all the distances have to be measured from the pole all distances yeah. whether you are measuring focal length radius of curvature whatever so all distances are measured from pole of the reflecting reflecting surface right so that is the second sign convention basically convention 
then next is which distance is positive and which distance is negative so the distances which are measured along the direction of incident ray are positive and against the incident ray that is direction of incident ray are taken as negative so distance along incident ray along the direction of incident ray will be taken as positive and opposite direction of incident ray will be taken as negative. negative. So this is the main sign convention which we have to okay. follow. This is the main sign convention. What is negative? What is positive? So if incident ray is here and if you are measuring if this is the direction of incident ray and if you are measuring any length in that direction so that will be taken as positive say for example if i take this lens right its pole will be somewhere over here let's say pole or center pole will be actually here but pole and this center are very near so i'm taking it like that now the incident ray will be uh, let's say this is the direction of incident ray and after some after refraction what will happen it will go through the focus we know this right we'll study yeah. this in detail but this is what happens so this is the focus. This is pole. So now if you see focal length is PF, right? And if you yeah. see, we have to measure from pole to focus. So it will go like this. So in that case, this PF will be taken as positive because that is along the direction of incident ray. Okay. Okay, and any distance if you are measuring, say for example, if object is here. So this distance is what? Negative. Object distance. But if you are measuring object distance, what, what is this second point? It says all the distance has to be measured from pole. So that means this object distance is actually measured from pole. So pole to the object. Mm. So you see it is yeah. in the opposite direction of incident ray. And that's why you will be taken as negative. Negative. Okay, we'll see how we have to apply this later. We'll see the application as well. But for the time being, that is what this is the most important sign convention which we have seen. Right? That yeah. when the distance has to be taken as positive and when it has to be taken as negative. So that is about the horizontal distance. Similarly, vertical distance. Right? So vertical distance is uh, simple. Uh, it is always measured from the principal axis in the upward direction. Uh, and if it is in upward direction, it is taken as positive. And if it is in downward direction, Down direction it will be taken as negative. That's all. So that these are the sign conventions which we are going to follow whenever we are going to derive something or whenever we are going to uh, solve any numerical. So let's study few cases. Let's say when the light enters from a rarer medium to denser, right? And what will happen in that case? And obviously the surface, let's say the surface is convex. So what will happen in that case, right? Which type of image is formed and uh, uh, different formulas about the image distance focus and radius of curvature and the uh, the object distance let us see that okay now let's say we have a convex surface so that means this is our surface okay this is the bulk right let's have our principal axis as well so let's say this is the principal axis. Let's say object is somewhere over here. So this is the position of object. Let's say that center of curvature is somewhere over here. So this is the center of curvature. Okay, so you have the object location that is O, you have the location of center of curvature that is C. Then obviously this point will be P that is P. 
poll okay and uh, that's all so that is about the two things which are already there that is principal axis sorry the p that is pole and the center of curvature now <clears throat> from this object as we know how the images are formed so as we said earlier also that you will have to assume the light rays right say for example uh, there can be a ray coming from this object it will hit the surface which is a convex surface now there will be a normal to the surface and normal to the surface in sphere will be what it will actually pass through the center of curvature so it will be like this so this is your normal this red dotted line is nothing but normal at this particular point so that means this is angle of incidence any doubt in that now what will happen no. to the light so the light ray which was actually going in this direction because it has moved from denser uh, sorry rarer medium to denser medium so what will happen to the light ray it will actually bend from its original direction and it will bend towards, towards the normal. normal so instead of going in that direction it will go in this direction yeah <clears throat> just a minute so this will be the direction of the refracted light no no doubt there right no okay so this is the direction of refracted light now this is the angle of refraction that mm. is angle of refraction okay uh, let's denote it by this is angle of incidence and this is angle of refraction okay gotcha. next uh, we have to take at least two such rays and the point of intersection of those two rays after refraction will be the image of the object so let's take another ray and that another ray is nothing but the ray this ray itself now if you see this ray here normal is also the same so cp is the normal as well and that's why the angle of incidence is zero and that's why this ray will go in the same direction without any deflection so it will go as it is straight so that means it will intersect here that means this is the image right so instead of o dash let's show it this i so i is the image of the point o done now let's have uh, you can see there are some angles being formed there let's say first that this point is point a where the ray strikes incident ray and if you draw a perpendicular from there let's say this is the foot of that perpendicular that is m okay obviously cp is what cp is the radius of curvature this distance distance of object from the pole is nothing but object distance and distance of image from the pole, pole to image is v will be what that will be v. v so this distance is v i hope this entire diagram how to make this or draw this diagram is clear yeah and even before that this medium let's say that is medium 1 which is rarer medium and this medium is medium 2 let's say that is denser medium and, so and, and mu2 are the refractive index of these two medium okay. okay now next one more thing here that is you have many triangles here and we will take three different angles that is alpha beta and gamma right alpha okay. is the angle between these two rays <clears throat> angle between the two incident ray we are taking that as alpha or you can say that the incident ray from the object yeah that is making an angle alpha with the principal axis and the image uh, sorry the refracted ray makes an angle beta with the beta axis. 
and then there is one more angle here let's say this angle is gamma, gamma. so this is gamma and this is r these are two different angles these are not say same right so this is r while this is gamma yeah two different angles okay so that is done now from this diagram which we have which you are saying you find o a and ai o a and ai why do you want to find that no no sorry uh so you're finding relationship between u v and r right yes <clears throat> so so basically we involve u v and r and make a formula uh with respect to am i'm just you know, no procedure yeah so i'm explaining that uh this <clears throat> diagram is clear so <clears throat> yeah that, that should be clear because you will have to duplicate or uh, you will have to replicate the same steps if the scenario changes if 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 it becomes denser to rarer or if it becomes instead of convex if it becomes concave in all those cases the procedure the steps will be same you draw the principle so how does the ray go for concave i'll explain that the, the, i'll like explain that let me first finish this so yeah. that that's what actually i'm explaining that these steps you have to follow the same steps that is you yeah. have to you have to draw the principal axis then you keep an object on that principal axis you draw an incident ray the way we have drawn same way then incident ray should refract you show the refracted ray there is possibility for example in convex as you can see here the refracted ray after refraction converges towards the principal axis so it will intersect the principal axis so that's what we have done here in concave it will be different we will come to that so this is what you have to do you have to draw the object you have to draw the refracted rays show the refraction draw the image done after that what we are doing is we are uh, marking the angles that is angle of incidence angle alpha of refraction beta. alpha beta and gamma alpha is incident ray angle between incident ray and principal axis beta is angle between refracted ray, ray and the principal, and principal axis. axis and gamma is this gamma is the angle the normal for the center of curvature this is that so same thing you have to do and you have to locate u r and v okay right okay what is the next step so next step is this the relation between i alpha and gamma if you see that if you have to do the same thing in all the uh, yeah, derivations so i is equals to hmm. alpha, alpha plus, plus gamma gamma exterior angle. I exterior yes exterior and interior opposite angles so exterior angle is equals to sum of interior opposite interior. angles done yeah. from this there is one thing right what is gamma now gamma is exterior angle of another triangle that is triangle aci so gamma is equals to r plus beta yeah so that means what is r r is gamma minus beta, beta. so these are the relations between uh, different alpha different beta gamma terms, right okay now try to find out all these three angles which we have seen right that is mm. alpha beta and gamma try and find out the tangent of all those angles that is tan alpha tan alpha is am by om op no om tan alpha is am, AM by om am divided by om okay beta is am by uh, mi am by mi and gamma is am by mc done and because the angles 
just now we have seen uh, we had seen one assumption that these angles are very small so tan alpha can be uh, taken as approximately equal to alpha so that means yeah. this is equals to alpha this um, is equal beta to gamma. gamma and this is equals to gamma that is about the angles now we have to relate uvr mm -hmm. and obviously we also have to include in that there will be even the refractive index included so how that in refractive index comes into picture sin i divided oh, by sin r that should be equal to mu 2 divided by mu 1 this is nothing but the snell's law snell's law so you apply that law and you will get this and because the angles are very small so that's why here sin i, I can by r. i and r that is equals to mu 2 divided by mu 1 right so you can say that mu 1 into i is equals to mu 2 into r into r right hmm. now this is one more important equation now you have i r here and uh, alpha beta gamma everything and uh, this m where you have right m right m so you can see that m and p are very close so wherever you have m that can be replaced with p so if you do that what will happen you will get alpha so now this alpha can be written as instead of am what will i write so M A, A, P by o, o, P. so this is equals to ap divided by o, P. o P. what is gamma beta beta is ap by m, m uh, pi pi and gamma is ap divided A, by, by P. pc okay okay so that is done now you have everywhere ap 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 so that is okay ap and am are same they are similar <clears throat> okay now if you substitute you uh, for i r alpha beta gamma you have alpha beta gamma everything right and i and r and replace m by p we have already done and uh, then if we work it out what we will get let's see that so we multiply mu1 into i is it it's already there i mu. will be so if i what is i that is alpha plus r i mean alpha plus gamma can you do that what uh like you place what is i so you, i is equal to alpha plus gamma and ah, r is correct so i is equals to alpha plus gamma and what is alpha here is alpha ap by op plus ap, AP by pc op so this is ap divided by op and <clears throat> and one more thing we have to measure all the lengths we have already seen that all the distances has to be measured from pole so it is good to write pa that is Pole to A. Okay. PA okay. divided by PO. PO. Similarly here, PA divided by PI. Okay. And this one should be PA divided PA by, by PC. So it's it doesn't make any difference, but it makes things consistent with our yeah. sign convention. So that helps later. So PA is P to A. P to A that we will leave because all of them are P. Right. So even here we'll have to change. So alpha is actually P A divided by P O plus gamma. Gamma is what? Gamma is P A divided by P C. P -C. So that is I. I is equals to this. Now you substitute this here. Yeah. So what you will get? Mu into mu one into PA. 
or uh, wait before that uh, r Take is equal to gamma minus b so uh. r is equal to gamma minus beta so even mm. solve that so r will be what r will be uh, gamma that is by pc pa divided by pc minus minus pa by pi done so now you substitute what these two right yes yeah. and this that is value of i and r in this equation so you take mu1 pas common and hmm. that so goes out mu1 into pa into 1 by po po plus, plus 1, 1 by, by pc pc that is equals to mu2 into pa <clears throat> into 1 by pc minus minus right minus 1 by pa and now you is you so PC pa is, is gone pa is gone yeah okay so now you have this mu 1 1 by po plus 1 by pc what one can i do? instead of one that by u plus one by one by u or minus u minus u so one by minus u plus minus u. by pc is one, one by r one by r that is equal to mu two into one, one by b is again one by no, r one by r and minus minus one, one by b right so that is yeah. mu two actually okay so now if you rearrange this u and v on the one side so you will get mu one divided by minus mu by minus u minus mu, mu 2 divided by sorry v plus v. is equal to mu 2 minus mu 1 mu 1 divided by, by r. r so this is the lens form not lens formula this is um, you can say just a formula for refraction at the convex surface when the light enters from rarer medium to denser medium. Okay. Right. So what is this formula? Uh, let's write it once again. This is mu1. Remember mu1 mm -hmm. is rarer in which there is object. So that's why mu1 divided by mu. Mu1 right. divided by u. And because it is on the left hand side, in the mm -hmm. direction opposite to the direction of incident ray, so that's why minus u plus mu two is the medium in which image is formed, so that divided by image distance that is equals to mu two minus mu one divided by r. r. This is our formula for this particular scenario. Now the thing is. If the scenario changes, that is, instead of rarer to denser mm -hmm. and having a convex surface, if you have some other scenario, let's say we'll take both. We will take the convex, uh, sorry, concave surface as well and uh, convex as well, both the cases. So let's, in this case, now I'll only draw the diagram, right? That how the image will look like and all. So suppose you have the same scenario. I mean, same setup, right? Convex mm. surface from rarer medium to denser medium, but, uh, sorry, one minute. That's from the lens. So it's not possible, right? Denser to rarer. So the around surrounding is denser, you mean? If, it, if, light, if object is kept here, right, any point here that is in the denser medium. But anyways, what I'm saying here is a different scenario. In this, your object is kept closer to the lens. Let's say somewhere over here, if it is kept here, then what will happen? Then image form infinity. Yes, yes. So, let's say the light with this time it will uh, it's going like this 
okay and what will happen let's say this is the center of curvature so you will have to draw the normal and you see here that the angle of incidence has increased right so angle of incidence hmm. is this is the normal now what will happen to the light the light ray will refract so instead of going in this direction it will refract so instead of so it was going in this direction so instead of going in that direction it will refract and it will bend towards the normal but if it comes because uh, if you see right if we have studied it earlier also that if you increase the angle of incidence even angle of refraction will increase yeah so if this angle of incidence increases this angle of refraction yeah. will also increase so there hmm. is a chance that if it comes closer increasing the angle of incidence angle of refraction will increase so much parallel to the it will actually go like this now if it go like this okay. it is not going to converge yeah right it will diverge and when it diverges obviously now there is no question of these two rays that is one ray which is going uh, one ray which we have shown here and the one ray which is parallel to the principal axis now these two rays are never going to intersect yeah so if they are not going to intersect then what will happen uh, obviously we won't be getting a real image then what happens then again what? suppose here is your eye you are seeing this then your brain does the backtrack and it yeah. sees that the object or the ray refracted ray is coming from this point so now it assumes or it it gives us the feeling that the image or the lines are inter rays are intersecting here and that's why we will say that this is the image so this is object this is image and this is a virtual image and that's yeah. why these two images are different the image which we have seen in the previous case here right this is the case of real image right while this one is the case of virtual image virtual image so this image is virtual so that so is virtual the virtual image is fall from the same side of the object right ah uh, yes virtual image is the image which is not formed by the real intersection of two rays generally the image the real image is the image which is formed by the actual intersection of two rays which we have seen in the previous section yes. example this is a backtracking yes so it is a backtracking it is done by your brain hmm. right it does the all that uh, it it traces it back and sees that from where these uh, refracted ray is coming from that is how your eyes get the uh, eyes so how do we so how do we what is the image that we see during the virtual case this is the image which you will see this one no like because it is forming the same side the object mm -hmm. um so we uh, when we are viewing we we do not view it through the object side right we view it uh, from the surrounding medium ha huh, so you see, you will see that object and the image are on the same side of this uh, curved surface okay 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 right this is the inter uh, perception which you will get and that's why this is hmm. called a uh, virtual image because image is not actually is yes real then how do we how, what do we see like um, so will it be at two different places or how do we see it obviously two different places that is very very clear here right this is on the But, uh, side of okay, okay. other side of uh, that spherical surface Lens. while in this case it is on the same side mm -hmm. okay and second most important thing is if you keep a screen here right say for example in the first case if you keep a screen exactly at this point so what will happen this 
point of intersection may fall on that screen and image will be captured on the screen oh, that's all yeah yeah right but we, this is the practicals do, that we have if you do the same needed thing, points if you do the so, same oh, mm. if you do the same thing here then what will happen are the rays actually intersecting if you keep a screen here are the rays actually no. intersecting no 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 so, you, so you can't see an image you you can see image but there won't be any uh, you cannot capture that image on this screen okay there okay, is a okay. difference between seeing the image and capturing the image on a screen on a screen okay image will be captured only if the rays will intersect at that particular point right mm. so this is the difference between virtual image and real image that this can not be captured virtual image cannot be captured and real image can be captured we can okay okay right because here these rays that this green dotted lines which you are seeing they are not the actual rays right mm. so this is what you will get in this case that is uh, what is this case the light is coming from rarer to denser it is uh, at the convex surface but because the object is very close to the surface that's why you are seeing a virtual image but the fact is if you go through the derivation again so what is the next thing which you have to do here you have to mark these angles angle with the image is beta angle with the object is alpha angle with the center is gamma i and r is already done and then you draw a perpendicular here and do all those derivations which you have already done you will get the same thing here the formula the final expression will be same that is hmm. mu1 divided by, by minus object distance is what minus u, minus u. plus mu2 divided by, by minus v. v that's what i'm oh. saying you get the same expression oh okay. mu2 minus mu1 divided by r so what do we see here that there is no change in expression hmm. okay 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 so that was about the con uh, convex what? case okay. convex surface two cases now the next yeah hmm. uh, you, you had some doubt no i'm just asking why is it not minus v is it because there's no intersection no 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 it is because of mathematics you try to do the same thing here you will get the same expression mm -hmm. yeah follow the same, same thing that is i is equals to alpha plus gamma or whatever here whatever uh, yeah, yeah relation okay. you will get you will get the same relation right i is equals to alpha plus gamma here as well r is equals to uh, r is equals to uh, gamma plus beta beta plus r yeah. beta plus gamma right gamma plus gamma. you will get here so there will be uh, gamma is here it is gamma is equals to r plus beta but i think here you will get something else here you will get uh, same thing no how you will get the same thing gamma here we did gamma plus beta is equals to r r is equals to gamma plus beta yeah right so r is equals to gamma plus beta and here it was r is equals to gamma minus beta so there is a difference here this is the difference and ultimately so this is only mathematics i mean uh, the geometry okay, okay. once you do this you will get the same so i leave this to you if you want you can derive this but you will get the same expression this is a um, like a two mark proof question what in boards is it like a proof question in boards yes yes you may get it you have to derive okay. it right so you may get it uh, okay. okay so that was about rarer to denser convex virtual the one which we have already seen earlier full derivation that was rarer to denser convex surface real image two cases are done
the third case yeah. is when you have a concave surface the reflecting surface is concave only that is the difference there is no other difference and hmm. you are doing the same thing that is rarer to denser right so this is also <coughs> rarer to denser but now you have a concave surface and we will see what is the type of image we will get so now let's say our object is somewhere over here at any place let's say this is the position of object so from this position now if you take an incident ray and see it carefully the center of curvature will be where center of curvature will be on this side on the right side left side okay mm -hmm. so somewhere over here there will be center of curvature so let's say this is the center of curvature now what do we know about refraction that through the center of curvature you will have to draw normal first and then you have to decide in which direction that ray will refract so first we will draw the normal so normal will be what it will be like this this is what this is normal now if there was no refraction this orange incident ray will go in this direction but now it won't go it will actually bend towards the towards the normal right yeah hmm? so where is the normal this is the normal so it will bend towards the normal so what will happen to the light ray it will from here it will actually diverge hmm. so in concave surface whatever be the scenario whether object is here or very far or very near it doesn't matter the ray after refraction will always diverge yeah right so that's why it will always diverge so if it always mm -hmm. diverge there is no question of this ray intersecting with the ray which is going along the principal the axis parallel. not possible axis. so again yeah. what will happen from this side we'll backtrack backtrack so you backtrack and you come here and you see that this is the point of intersection again imaginary point of intersection so that is your image image so in case of concave mirror you will always have a virtual image image concave surface not mirror right it will be always a virtual image and again here you will have to take uh, so inr you can take and then again the same angles that is alpha with yeah. incident ray beta and this will be your gamma uh -huh. all those things and once that is done you will again do the same procedure and what you will find here again is that the expression is same mu1 divided by minus q plus mu2 divided by v is equals to mu2 minus mu1 divided by r so now what does that mean yes. that means this mm. is a fixed formula this is never changing yeah okay okay it is never changing if it is from rarer to denser medium hmm right so till now we have seen only that we have seen only rarer to denser medium denser. now what will happen if there is denser to rarer medium so there is this difference so what happens if there is a if it is reverse if the direction is reversed so let's say we have a denser medium here as we have already said that we will always draw the incident ray from left to right so that's why i am drawing it like this so that we have a denser medium here and rarer medium on the right and we can draw our incident ray traveling from left to right so the from the lens to the surrounding right 
there is no lens here this is a medium medium a one medium. this is another medium medium two the interface okay. the interface is curved okay 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 so now here if you have an object let's say here and the ray from the object comes you are going from denser to rarer medium so you will also have a center of curvature let's say center of curvature is here and then in this case this will be the normal and now what will happen to the ray the ray will bend away from the normal that means mm. the ray will come like this and ultimately it will go and converge into the principal axis somewhere over here and your image will be formed here hmm. is it clear this is when it is moving from denser medium to rarer medium so again you will get what so it is traveling from sorry from denser to rarer the surface okay, is no. surface convex. is convex see the incident ray is hitting concave surface but the surface no. which is uh, touching Refracting. the the surface which is touching the rarer medium that is convex that's why we are saying that it is convex mm -hmm. surface remember our assumption okay, okay. which we have taken that those assumptions are very important right like here uh where is that ha huh? i mean by definition we have fixed right that the surface which is visible or which is uh there on the rarer medium side that is the refracting surface mm. right the refracting surface which is concave towards the rarer medium is called the concave refracting surface it is based on the surface which is towards the rarer medium so even if you see in this case the surface sorry uh in this case the incident ray is coming from this side and that's why it is hitting the concave surface but the surface which is exposed to the rarer medium that is convex and that's why this is convex surface so don't forget that so this is denser to rarer convex surface and here you have a real image now in this case again the procedure remains same there is no change in the procedure or the steps which you have to do but here there will be a difference if you see here if you see the previous one in previous one it was i write here in small it was mu1 divided by minus u plus mu2 divided by v is equals to mu2 minus mu1 divided by r Like, mu1 minus mu2 right here the thing is that this is denser medium and that's why the refractive index is mu2 and mu1 so if you see the refractive index has changed okay okay the on left i i hope you understood this right yeah yeah this was hmm. mu1 and this was mu2 but now mu2. it is so whatever we have done in the initial formula the same formula you have to write here but you have to consider this change so what it will be so above you you were writing the mu the refractive index of that medium in which the object is kept so mu2 yeah, is that so mu2 uh, minus yeah, minus u then by plus, plus mu1 by uh one divided by v by because v. this is capital right and that is yeah. equal to so there it mu was minus mu1 here it will be mu1 mu1 minus divided by okay. r so when you are going to derive it for other cases in con, uh, in this case that is from denser to rarer if you do it you will get the same formula so three times you get this formula and three times you get this formula 
So to summarize, we can say that if it is moving from rarer to denser, irrespective of irrespective lens or of, I mean the surface, irrespective of the type of surface, refracting surface or the nature of the image, you will get the same formula that is oh, yeah. mu divided by minus u plus mu2 divided by v is equals to mu2 minus mu1 divided by r. Uh. And if it is from denser to rarer medium, again, irrespective of whatever is the other scenario, you will get this, that is mu2 divided by minus u plus mu1 divided by v is equals to mu1 minus mu2, mu2 by r. Okay. So this is, or these are the formulas for refraction at uh, spherical surfaces, right? So thing is what? Here object is in rarer medium. Here object is in denser medium. So it depends only on that. If object is in rarer medium, that is the formula. If object is in denser medium, second formula. Okay. Right? So the values of u, v, and r, you will take with proper signs. That's all. While solving the numerical problems. Right? And mu1 okay. and mu2, you can see, are getting interchanged in the above formula. So that is the uh, formula for refraction. That is formula for only refraction. I hope you understood this. Hmm. Okay. Now, we will be using the same formula, the two formula which we have seen. We will be using the same two formula to find the next formula, which is called yes. lens maker's formula. So lens maker's formula, because this formula is used by people who are, make, who are going to make the lens. So you need a lens for a given magnification. You need a particular magnification of lens. But for that person who is making that, how will he go, how will he decide? Uh, he he, he, he can decide the, surface. the dimension and all. How will he understand that? So for him, we are actually deriving this formula. So what is a lens? We will actually take a convex lens. So let's say this. Okay, let's say this is our convex lens. Right? And the object is kept here. Okay, this is lens L. And uh, these two are the ends. Let's say L, N are the two ends, top and bottom. Then let's say these are the two poles. P1 and P2. Okay. We have not, uh, yeah, LNN we have taken, done. Now, what will happen here? Let's say this side there is air, or normally air, it will be there. This side also it will be same, but the lens will have a different U2. index, let's say U2. Now, both the lenses will have, both the surfaces will have their own. Uh, radius of curvature. Let's say the radius of curvature of this part or the center of curvature of the second face is this. So C2 is center of curvature of this space where there is P2, I mean for pole 2. And uh, so that is center of curvature of first. And similarly, center of, center of curvature of second surface. The center of curvature, curvature of first surface that is the surface on the left side will be somewhere over here. Let's say this. So this is center of curvature of first surface. So these are all different points. Now, how the image will be formed. So if you see, there will be now two types of rays will be there. Okay. That is, or the image will be formed in two uh, you can say in two steps. First, 
from the object, the ray will hit this lens. Let's say it hits here. So it's like rarer denser and like denser to rarer. Yes. So this is from rarer to denser. Denser. You got it. So in dense is rarer, you have mu one, and denser you have mu two. So it is similar to the formula which we have already seen. Yeah. Let's say this, this point is point A, and uh, what will happen now here? So this is surface one. So for surface one, you will have this normal, and yeah. the light ray will bend towards the normal. Rarer to denser, towards. it will move yeah, towards, towards normal. So instead of going in this direction, as you can see, it has bent towards the normal. Now again, there is another surface. Yeah. And now the light is coming from denser medium denser to, to rarer medium, right? So denser hmm. to rarer. Again, here there will be a. Uh, here we will draw this uh, center of curvature and all. So if you draw the center of curvature for this surface, right? It will be this. I mean, normal is this. So now yeah. it will it is going from denser to rarer. So because it is going from denser to rarer, it will instead of going like this, it will bend away from the norm. So that is normal. It will bend away from the normal. That means uh, it will actually come like this. Yes. Okay. Actually, what happens? You can actually take it as a two-step process, as I said earlier. That you can assume that the light has this light ray in the first first refraction itself has come somewhere over here, and it has crossed it. And this is the virtual image. Let's say I one. Now this image will act as object for what? For the second surface, and then. Because this is now an imaginary denser medium, so from denser medium it is it will go to the rarer medium, and that's why the image will be formed on the same side. So this is so, the actual image. So to prove lens maker's formula, we use uh, like when we are deriving. In suppose I give us a question to derive the lens maker's formula, we do both the parts right from denser to rarer, and then from so, sorry, from rarer to denser, and then yes. denser to rarer, and then in the end we combine the equation. Yes, that's what we are doing. So yeah, that's yeah. when when it was, or let's say there are two surfaces here. That is, uh, refraction at L P one N. That is this surface, surface on the left hand side. So that is actually what that is. From rarer to denser, convex, and real image is formed. So in this case, we know that what formula we have to use. We have to use mu one divided by object distance that is co because we have to take from the pole. So that's why we are taking from the pole. We'll we'll substitute the uv value later. So mu one divided by this plus mu two divided by b. now this is important here for the first surface the image is formed here yeah hmm. right that is ci1 so this is ci1 that oh, is equal okay. to mu2 minus mu1 divided by divided by what r that is radius of curvature now what is radius of curvature here so radius of curvature is c C1. Yes, for the first one it is C C. Right now you take refraction at uh, L P two N. Right, and at this now this image will act as what? Act as object, and it is hitting this surface, and it is coming back to the same medium. Because it is hitting the uh, like this, right? 
it is going from denser to rarer medium. Yeah. Because the image is formed in here. So this is the denser medium. This you. is the denser medium, right? So object is in denser medium. So when object is in dense, now this image will act as object for the second surface. So that is in the denser medium. So if it is in the denser medium, then the formula is what? Formula is uh, mu2 divided by ci1 ci1 by mu1 divided by mu1 divided by v that is ci this is i so ci is equal yeah. to mu1 minus mu2 divided C by r and r is cc2 Yeah. Is that clear? Okay. But in this case and the above case as well, we have to apply the uh, sign convention as well, right? So that we have to take care. Now this is done. Now we have to just combine these two formula. And when you combine these two formula, you will get, I'll give you the final expression which you have to derive. You give it a try and let me know if you're able to do it or not. And if you're not able to do it, just inform me on WhatsApp itself. I'll give you a video explanation for that. But I want you to give it a try before me explaining you this, right? Ultimately, the formula which you give, which you get here is one by minus two, because you have to do the same thing which we have done earlier. I just want to check whether you are able to apply the sign convention or not. So that's why I'm leaving it to you, for you. So one minus one by u plus one by u v is equals to mu two minus mu one divided by mu one into one by r minus one by r two. This is the lens maker's formula. So from these two, you have to derive this. Okay. Okay. Try that. You just have to substitute the values and the sign yeah, yeah. and see if you are able to do it or not. Okay, once you have this formula, once you get this, now here I can rewrite this, the expression on the right hand side as mu surrounding by mu one minus one. Sorry, mu minus one. Two, one by R1 minus one by R2. That is one thing. And what is mu2 by mu1? Mu2 by mu1 is mu minus 1. So that is mu yeah. minus 1 into 1 by r1 minus 1 by r2. That is equals to 1 by minus u plus 1 by v. Okay, that is the one thing. Yeah. Now, next, the special case for this is what we will see that as well and then we will finish uh, today's class so, so, uh, oh yeah continue it's okay. Last part. okay now when the object is kept at infinity that means when u is at infinity right obviously if it is on the left hand side it will be minus infinity. So, zero. so when the infinity when the object is kept at infinity we know that image will be formed at if the object focus. is infinity, image will be formed at focus. So V will be equal to F. Now, if you substitute this particular <coughs> data uh -huh. in the formula which we have, we will have okay. 1 by infinity, F? that is nothing but 0, oh, sorry, plus infinity. 1 by F is equals to uh, okay. minus 1 into 1, one by, by R1 minus 1 by R2 okay. or simply 1 by f is equal to mu minus 1 minus. into 1 by r1 minus 1 by r2. r2. This okay. is the final lens maker's formula. Because if you see the earlier formula, right, 
it has u v and all those things and so if you change the u and v obviously other things will change so you don't leave this decision making to the maker of the lens <clears throat> you actually give him what is the power so power depends on focus so you give him the focus, you give him this formula and you give him the power he puts power here one by f is nothing but power we'll see that later and then he knows the material of the uh, glass for that he will know the mu and for that he just have to find out what will be the r1 and r2 nothing else okay okay so that's how he ends up making the lens okay right and from this so equation one more thing. just one thing from this equation yeah. itself you also get that 1 by sorry 1 by minus u plus 1 by v is equals to 1 by f so try to derive this as well so this and this two things you have to derive and let me know if you are not able to do that or if you have any doubt in that so okay. we'll discuss that in the next class yes what was your doubt so uh, my doubt was that how is lens format different from lens makers formula okay so you know the two different formulas right the first formula yeah. the one in the orange circle that is lens makers formula lens that formula. is used by the those people who are making the lens so hmm. right they will have to find out what should be the radius right center of i mean the yeah. radius uh, curvature of two surfaces so that they get a particular power but this is different the lens formula which is in the green circle that actually gives you the relation between focus objective distance and sorry object distance and image distance so you can actually find where will be the image form where if if the object is kept at a particular place and the given lens is there whose focal length you know then where will be the image form that can be done or this formula is used for that purpose not for making the lens okay okay so that is about the lens formula can you give me a hint how to find the lens formula from lens makers Can you derive this lens formula normally? That is just by using a lens, how the image is formed. Yeah. Yeah. So first try that and uh, that will have hint for you. Okay. <clears throat>